this is a man who has experienced a lot of amazing experiences in, in the world of music. He's one of those guys behind the scenes that the kids didn't know about. His life experiences, no one else has had those life experiences uh, on the industry professional front. He led the Beatles' U.S. career. He was one of the people on the roof in London when the Beatles did their final concert. To say that I was with the Fab Four and they picked me to run Apple U.S., come on, I mean, that's, that's some pretty rarefied air. Being asked by the Beatles to come run their company in America was the most exciting thing a person could be asked to do in the recording industry in the 60s. But you know what? They had already made it. The thing that was really incredible was being part of the outlaw movement, building that from the start with Waylon Willie and the boys. Ken even after all those years of literally being one of the few people that was in the inner circle with the Beatles, that today he's a committed Christian that's lived and grown in his faith tremendously for years and years and years, but also one of the greatest writers that I have ever read. I mean, the guy can just write so beautifully and so poetic. It's awesome. I think God makes leaders, and uh, I think Ken is one of those. When my wife Connie and I received the news that we were going to go through a cancel battle the second time, it was like looking at this journey that we'd been down through before, a road we'd been down through before, and to enter it again was just something uh, that we weren't prepared for, maybe even less the second time than the first time. The first time was more of a designer uh, cancer, one that uh, moved slowly and you had chance to adapt and live with, but the second one was, was just brutal and uh, life or death, no question, all or nothing. One thing I'd learned is never to say, God, why me? That is just something I'd learned to say, uh, to think from the beginning. And when the second battle came through, I really was wondering, what does God have in this for me? Here's a man who wants to tell his story so that others can have hope and believe in a God who cares for us. God who suffers with us, uh, not an impersonal God who's not in touch with our struggles and our fears. You have to remember that God is faithful and you can have a conversation with Him during this. You can tell Him you're not having a good time. You can tell Him you don't like what's going on. You can tell Him you don't want this to happen, you know, and it's okay because that's called prayer. So in some ways I think Ken liberates a whole lot of people to take a big deep breath and say, I just want to remind you, you are human, you will pass from this earth, how do you want to live life, and you're going to have struggles. I think that's what people need to know, that it is okay, you know, it wasn't your idea, you know, and you're not a bad person or you haven't sinned because it's not all these things that the devil is trying to make you believe. I think he has every right to, to speak and write about his pain because Obviously, he wrote this book not because he's thinking, hmm, this could be a really sellable topic. I think he wrote this book because I've gone through something and I know other people are going through the same thing, and there are going to be people who are going to go through this who may not even realize what's ahead of them. It is what it is, and uh, you have a book, and, and you have uh, a God that's going to see you through this.